Hi, this is Karen White of Divine Time Astrology, and I'm doing two authors tonight. They are both romance writers and very, very well known. They are both very prolific. They've written very uh, many romance uh, books and have had them made into movies or TV shows. One of them is a man and one of them is a woman. I'm looking at Nicholas Sparks first because one of you asked me to do his chart. Now, I don't have his birth time, but you can still see his ability to write even without the birth time. So remember the rules, right? The moon always has to be involved. And then it needs to be with, aspected by, or ruled by either Venus, Jupiter, or Mercury. Now, without a birth time, I can't really get the correct houses involved. But I can show you <coughs> his birth chart anyway and show the writing in his chart. So here his moon is in the sign of Aries. So it's not in the sign of Jupiter, Venus, or Mercury. However, it's aspected by Venus. And, and these are the Jaimini aspects, which means that the movable cardinal signs aspect the fixed signs and vice versa, except when they're right next to each other, which means the fixed sign of Taurus cannot aspect Aries, and the movable sign of Aries cannot aspect Taurus, but it can aspect Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So here's Venus aspecting the moon. And then his soul planet, or his Atmakarika planet, is Jupiter, and it's ruled by Mercury, the riding planet. And so we look here in the Navamsha, and the Navamsha, the moon, is in Virgo, which means it's ruled by Mercury. And his Atmakarika Jupiter is also aspected by Mercury. And you can even see it here in the Dasamsha, which is the divisional chart that we look at for the career specifically. And the moon here is in Libra, which means it's ruled by Venus. And it's sign aspected by Jupiter, one of the three necessary planets that we need. So this is a man who writes romances. I really would love to have his birth time so I can just see more about him. The story about how he became a writer is pretty interesting. He told his mother that he was bored and she said that he needed to do something creative. So she said, write a book. And that really captured his imagination and he wrote a book, and then he wrote many, many more books. Now he's a screenwriter also. The other author is Nora Roberts, and she is incredibly prolific. And look at her chart. Again, I don't have her birth time, but for noon, it's very interesting how her chart comes together for the, by the books that she's written. Here's the moon. Well, first of all, her Atmakarika planet is Jupiter. And here we see it here in Aquarius, and it aspects the moon, and the moon aspects Jupiter. And we see the moon is not only ruled by Venus, but it's with Venus, and it's with Mercury too. Jupiter's in the third house, I mean, the moon is aspecting the third house, excuse me. And the, the third house lord, Saturn, here is ruled by Mercury, which is with the moon. And then the fifth house lord is Mars, because this is Aries. Mars is here in Sagittarius, which means it's, it's ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter aspects the moon. And then the ninth house... See, uh, seven, eight, yeah. 
The ninth house lord is the sun, and we see the sun is here with the moon, Venus, and Mercury. Another thing about her books that are interesting is that her heroines, they tend to be very feisty women, but Mars here in the ascendant, if this is indeed her ascendant, would make her a rather feisty individual herself. And so, you know, writers do, they don't write about themselves directly, but nevertheless, they cannot avoid having themselves in their novels in some way. So uh, I'm thinking that her heroines being feisty is because she's a feisty woman herself. And then you come over here to the Navamsha, and look, Karat Makarika is in the sign of Gemini. The, the ruled by Mercury, which is the writing planet. And Gemini, when, when the Atmakarika is in Gemini in the Navamsha, this means that a person's fame will often continue long after their death. Well, she's still alive, but we'll see. She's been such a prolific writer, and a, a lot of her books have been made into movies and um, TV shows as well. Now, I have to tell you, I've always been a bit of a snob about romance novels. But this weekend, I, well, I was thinking about Nora Roberts. And I looked her up, and in one of her, actually, I think it was Wikipedia when it was talking about her, it mentioned a documentary that she was in. And the name of the documentary is Love Between the Covers. And I went to Netflix and I watched it. And I recommend that you do too. If you love writing, if you love writers, if you want to be a writer. And learn about the people who are writing romance novels. The romance novel market is the biggest market. They outrank every other kind of book. Even mysteries, even science fiction. And they are fulfilling a real need. Which reminds me, again, something about uh, Nora Roberts' uh, books. Now, one of the things I do as an astrologer is um, I recommend that single women who want to get into a relationship read some romance novels because it puts you in the frame of mind for romance. And it kind of lightens up the whole thing. You know, the whole dating thing so that it's not so serious. And the romance novels, they're full of witty repartee and, you know, the whole chase, and it's they're just fun. But what I've noticed about Nora Roberts in particular, because I went through a period of time where I read some of her novels um, in my 20s, I believe it was, because I was single. I wanted to get into the frame of mind of, you know, romance. Well, her her characters are people who have been damaged somehow. They've been hurt, they've been, they have had their hearts broken. And what really strikes, has struck me about her work, how love is a great healer. And so I noticed something else too about her chart. In order to be a healer, you need to have moon and mercury together or aspecting each other, or the moon ruled by Mercury, or Mercury ruled by the moon. And you need to have the sixth house lord involved too. The sixth house is the house of the healing arts. And the sixth house lord here, okay, it's Taurus, which means it's ruled by Venus. And she has that also with the moon. And Venus is very powerful in the sign of Libra. So she writes about love as a healing force. And it's not just romantic love. In her novels, there are various kinds of love. Family love, friendship love, parents for children love. She, she's like the queen of love. Anyway, I recommend that you see the documentary, Love Between the Covers. It was really quite an eye-opener. I found it very um, interesting, informative, and moving. Now, if you would like to find out what your talents and abilities are, if you're a writer or an artist or a dancer or some other kind of 
artist. Then go to my website, Divine Time Astrology, under the Services tab. Check out the whole life reading. And this is what I will do. I will do the J. Mindy technique on your birth chart. And uh, I'll show you all of your talents, abilities, and skills. So this has been Karen White of Divine Time Astrology. And until next time, good night.